Hi, everyone, and welcome to the CX Green Room. This is the show where we go behind the curtain with CX leaders and talk about the big trends affecting customer experience today. My name's Claire Beatty. I am a Senior Director for Thought Leadership at Genesis. Uh, my co-host is Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director. And we have a special guest today, uh, Henry Svenblad, who's President and CTO at Company Nurse, powered by Lintelio. And if we're really, really lucky, his beautiful cat, Raja, might pop into the screen. Uh, you've heard about night. them. So we can, we can hope for that. So welcome, Henry. Thank you very much. Um, you have somewhat of a dual role at Company Nurse, powered by Lintelio, um, a bit of a B to B to C. Would love to hear more about your role and the company, and then we'll, we'll get started. Sure, sure. Thank you for having me. So um, as you said, I have a dual role now, but I, I joined uh, Company Nurse about six years ago. So I'm on my sixth year, and I joined first as a contractor with the role of finding a new contact center platform, which is how we ended up on Genesis. And then um, they asked me to join uh, shortly after that as CTO. And about a year ago, we launched Lintelio, which is our technology division. And so that's why now we say company nurse powered by Lintelio. So company nurse has, is a contact center in Scottsdale, Arizona, that has been focused on lessening the pain of workers comp. And we do that with empathetic nurses, which is where the, the healthcare side of this comes in. And what we realize is that with the right CX technology, we can also provide digital empathy, which allows us to expand our capabilities into other areas within risk management. That's, that's so cool. I, I love the fact that you're combining this, um, these empathetic experiences that are so important generally, but especially in your industry and, you know, putting technology behind them, which I know we're going to talk about more later, but first, this is the CX Green Room and we're hanging out with the big heavy hitters in CX and getting their take on the latest trends and strategies. And like so many celebrities, <laughs> they're a demanding bunch. So we've had some special requests from our guests for the CX Green Room, New York style cheesecake, dairy-free Ben and Jerry's, and Henry, I know we asked you for your CX Room special item as well. So can you tell us a little bit about what you chose and why? Sure. So this is probably a first for, I think, I'm sure it's a first that you maybe even heard of it, but I chose Bulletproof Coffee. And so what is Bulletproof Coffee? Basically, it's coffee and it doesn't have to be coffee that you buy at Bulletproof.com. It's just coffee mixed with either ghee or grass-fed butter, which I know probably sounds kind of gross, why would you put unsalted butter in your coffee? But um, the, the theory behind it is that the MCT oil is actually healthy for you and it helps you focus and provide energy, which fuels your fat metabolism. We could probably do a full podcast just on, <laughs> on this. Um, I was a, uh, a professional endurance athlete and one of, the, one of the issues that a lot of athletes have is they take in too much sugar and so their carbohydrate metabolism sort of takes over. And when you're doing these long endurance events, it's really your fat metabolism and your ability to burn that fat that allows you to power for, for many hours. I was doing six hour and 24 hour races and I would go out training uh, with just bulletproof coffee. And in fact, today, I don't typically have my first meal until later in the afternoon. So my, my morning is usually powered by bulletproof coffee. So. <laughs> Cheers. Well, Cheers. I have to say that in the UK, uh, bulletproof coffee as a concept ha has not really come into my world yet, but I managed to track it down and I have a cup here. But stirring in a spoonful of butter was like the strangest, <laughs> the strangest thing. Um, but actually, it tastes very good. So at five o'clock in the afternoon, I'm very caffeinated. So let's see how that's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and keep in mind, you know, butter, you know, there used to be butter was sort of the devil and, and it was, you know, everything was low fat. And now really the trend is is focused around uh, trying to put sugar out of your diet because it's really that sugar that, you know, fuels, uh, spikes your insulin and creates a, obesity and, and all kinds of problems. So hopefully you keep up with the Bulletproof Coffee. Well, so far so good is all I can say. 
Um, okay, so back to back to CX, the matter at hand. Um, we heard a bit about the description of the company and how you provide empathy to, to employees um, going through a workplace incident. But there are several different personas that you, you interact with at your customer base. We'd love to hear more about some of those different types of persona and some of the different types of channels or interactions that you have, just to get a sense of the complexity of your environment. Sure. So obviously the the one of the key personas is the stakeholder or the injured employee, um, as we refer to them in, in this case, or the claimant. Um, this is somebody that's had a very bad day at work. Uh, they may have uh, uh, been bitten by a student. They may have uh, fallen, uh, slipped on ice. Today's uh, there's some ice storms, so we're getting some some calls on ice, and we take about. 700 of these phone calls uh, per day um, now. Obviously, we've, it's taken us many years to get to that, that volume. But the other maybe not so thought about persona for us is that claims processing manager. So we, our philosophy is that we lead with empathy and with excellence for that injured employee. So instead of providing them with a very difficult to follow process, we provide them with a QR code that they scan it takes them to our digital assistant that we've dubbed Lynn from Lintelio. And Lynn will collect all the information, all the details about the workplace incident um, in a mobile and secure way. And then transfer that call to one of our empathetic nurses so that they can provide triage advice to that injured employee and get them along the way. But the other thing that we do is we integrate with all of the different stakeholders in the process. And so by collecting the information accurately and timely right at the beginning of the workplace incident, we're able to then distribute that information to the third party administrator, to the insurance carrier. We can notify the, the, their supervisor manager if, uh, you know, in the case of a, of a grave accident, we can send alerts to the risk management team or even the CEO of the comp company. So our other persona is that claims processing manager. Our aim is to make their life easier by providing them accurate and timely information about these incidents. Yeah, that is so important. And, you know, we're talking a lot um, right now, obviously, about these personal interactions. And we often think of when we have more self-service and automated interactions, it's a little bit less human um, or human-centric, I should say. And, but you talked about briefly um, the concept of digital empathy. And we'd love for you to share more about that with our audience today, what that means. Sure, sure. I know my team um, kind of challenged me a little bit too because they thought, well, how can, how can computers provide empathy, right? You don't think of it that way. But, but if you think about it, what would you rather do, wait for 30 minutes uh, to talk to an agent? Or would you rather uh, use a self-service option and uh, get your information entered in accurately and then get to the right uh, person at the right time that can help you with that problem. Or if you're showing up to a healthcare provider because we refer you to a medical clinic uh, for, for your first appointment, you wanna make sure that they have your information and your employer accurate so that you know all the way down the chain, you feel like this is being handled in an efficient way. And we found that that uh, reduces the number of claims that end up getting created and we also reduce costs up to 40% for, for our clients by eliminating unnecessary claims, by directing employees to the appropriate point of care, and by having all that information at their fingertips when they need it. Henry, um, what, if, you're, if you're looking to use you know, the customer experience to drive empathy, um, what metrics are important to you as you, as you think about measuring that? Well, um, one of the key metrics that we focus on is experience, what we call experience time. So, um, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but um, I, I love it when I when I talk. I, I always take an opportunity to call a contact center just to see how they handle my call, whether that's an airline or bank. And often you get, you know, very empathetic and apologetic uh, employees. But then they're asking you to spell your name 15 as they transfer you to every department. You have to tell the story over and over again. And so one of the things that we look at is the experience time. How long is this interaction taking? And what can we do with digital tools to offset that? So, for example, 
you know, we might give very detailed instructions to an injured employee over the phone about what they need to do to perform self-care, meaning ice, ibuprofen. We also follow up with a text message. Um, we do warm handoffs to telemedicine and our telemedicine uh, partners tell us that we have the highest show rate or the lowest no show rate. And I, we think that it's because of this, not only the empathy that our nurses provide, but then also this digital empathy that is providing them with the information they need. Other things that we look at, obviously we look at um, uh, the satisfaction. So interestingly enough uh, on our, our, on our digital channel, we have a survey that we're getting about 40% of, um, of participants to respond to, which is really high. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we, we range anywhere from 95% to 100% satisfaction. And all they have to do is click on a smiley face or a frowny face and then give us some comments. So we make it really easy for them to provide us feedback. And, and obviously that's, that's really important as a metric. Yeah, and uh, pr focusing on experience time is quite a different concept to handle time, mm -hmm. metric, metrics like that. Um, curious about your experience with implementing new um, CX technologies. We heard about, you know, Lee in the chat box earlier. Um, is there a recent implementation that stands out as, you know, being interesting or going well or something that you learned from? Yeah, so obviously we, we talked a little bit about our bot. Um, one, one of the things that we're uh, focusing on right now is we're, we're deploying a client portal, which you, you might think, well, what does that have to do so much with, with CX? But um, we're, uh, as we're creating new workflows that we're targeting for other types of risk management work uh, episodes, um, we're allowing our customers to share with their stakeholders how they can drive the whole communication around the process. So by this, I mean printing out posters and wallet cards and stickers that they can uh, provide to their employees so that if somebody is injured at work or if they have a liability claim, they can scan that QR code and then launch the process, which ob obviously takes them to our, our digital assistant. Once they're there, they can request a callback. Uh, they can um, they can uh, complete most of the transaction digitally and then only be connected to a nurse if they need it. So um, shifting gears a bit, we're, we've talked about um, you know, the, the, the customer side, the technology side. Let's talk a little bit about the employee side. So you know, during COVID and even more the, the heart of COVID, I should say, and even still now, the focus on employee engagement, really um, recruiting, engaging, and managing that CX workforce has be become such a hot topic. Uh, I was just at three different conferences, and I can't tell you, it just everybody was talking about it. Even if speakers were talking about a different topic, it, it came up. Um, you know, what trends are you seeing with regard to the workforce that you've personally experienced um, you know, at Company Nurse by Lentelio, yeah. powered by Lentelio? Thank, thank you for that. So um, one of our core values is compassion for everyone. And that isn't just compassion for the injured employee. Of course, we, we, we have that. But it's, it starts with compassion for our team members. And so um, we've... Uh, historically had a very low turnover rate. I think the turnover rate in Arizona for contact centers is in the high 30s or low 40% per year. We're a single digit turnover company. And I think part of that is uh, focusing on the employee experience, the contact center agent experience. What kind of tools do they have at their disposal to feel like they're you know, effective at their job and that they enjoy doing what they do day in and day out. And then it's also what we do for employees. So when COVID happened, we um, we basically signed a pledge to our employees not to lay anybody off, even though we were seeing a significant drop in uh, in volume because a lot of our customers are in, in the school vertical or, you know, high schools, uh, uh, elementary schools. And as you can imagine, <laughs> For 25 years, they've been very stable, cyclical, but but stable, right? We have uh, low periods of the year where we have less volume. But COVID, they just entirely shut down. So we went, uh, our volume dropped significantly, and we made that pledge. Um, the other thing that we've done recently is we've um, we've looked at 
what other tools are uh, not only our employees but our customers need and stress and um, and you know some of the challenges of the pandemic um, have brought really uh, a feeling of isolation um, people potentially uh, abusing or their family members abusing uh, drugs or, or alcohol and so we're providing our employees with not only an employee assistance program, top of the line uh, employee assistance program, but we're also offering that uh, to our to our customers. And then we've also recently partnered with a company called WeConnect uh, that offers a uh, an addiction recovery plan that's uh, available to our employees as well as their families. And what's interesting is we were doing this really for initially for our customers. When we shared it with our employees, they said, you know, we could use that. And I think a lot of us are touched by people in our lives that maybe are, are, are dealing with that. And so we wanted to provide um, those kinds of services. Other things that we're seeing, uh, turnover has increased a little bit um, and you know, we're, we're in a, a period of high growth. First thing for us is um, you know, with employees now being 100% remote um, is people not showing up. Uh, and this is kind of a first, uh, and I think I'm, I'm hearing it from other companies as well, where you make an offer to someone, you send them the equipment, and then they just don't show up or they ghost you for for an interview. So I think that, you know, there's something there. I'm not sure I know the core core reason behind it, but it's definitely a, another trend that we're seeing. The um, I think sometimes uh, CX uh, needs a, a more a, a more positive profile as a career. And one of the things that the trends that we've seen in our research is that leaders are increasingly focusing on career development, learning and development opportunities so that you know this is a, a career for the long term and, you know, people feel invested in in, in doing this kind of work. It sounds like you're focusing on some of those things as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, do we have any questions from the audience, Ginger? Um, we don't yet. I, I put a chat question out there to see, you know, who's who has questions. But in the meantime, I do have a question. Just happen to have an extra one handy. Um, <laughs> so, I, uh, Henry, I feel like when people talk about empathy, it's, you know, it's like the touchy-feely side of things. Um, but as you were saying, you, when you, when you add, you've got empathy and that's so important that that is so important. And then adding that digital empathy aspect has additional benefits, not just in, you know, like better customer experience, but also, you know, with processes being sped up and your interactions the simple interactions getting to your agents and so them ha having time to have more complex interactions. What are you seeing as some of the key business benefits of being empathetic and having that, d delivering those more empathetic experiences in person and through uh, digital self-service interactions? That's a great question, Ginger. And, and what's surprising is that some in this industry, um, we know because we, we hear it sometimes from, and I, I won't name names, but from sometimes from insurance brokers, they ask us, well, why do you want to make it easy for somebody to, you know, report a claim? Aren't your, you know, are your claims going to go sky high, right? It sort, sort of seems counterintuitive, but our philosophy and our experience tells us that if you put a well-designed, effective and efficient process led with excellence and empathy, that it changes the dynamic of the whole interaction. So you go from somebody feeling like I just had the worst day of my life to, wow, my employer actually cares for me. This is a benefit that they're providing. I'm speaking with a nurse who has a Hippocratic oath to take care of me, right? They, this is, this is a, a firm belief that they have and, and they're taking me to the right point of care. And the result of that is fewer claims, lower claim cost, less litigation. And, and this has been proven over 25 years. And so now what we're doing is we're taking that same concept of CX excellence, empathy and digital empathy and applying it to other workflows where we think we can have the same sort of impact by leading with this empathy and excellence. I love that because it's benefiting your company, but it's also benefiting your customers' companies or customer companies and their businesses as well. So it's like a win 
it's a, a win, 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 because you don't often get that. Exactly. It's a win for the, it's a win for the employee. It's a win for the employer, the insurance, the, the payer of the claims is, you know, they're, they're seeing fewer claims. So it really is a win, win, win. There we go. The uh, empathy also boosts the bottom line at the end of the day when people feel heard and understood and perhaps they feel like cooled down by the whole experience and that someone really cares about them. Henry, thank you very much for joining us in the green room today. Really enjoyed having you and sad that Raja didn't make an appearance, but uh, <laughs> we'll just have to have you back. Um, I'll, so I'll promise to have Raja with me next time. <laughs> Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us in the green room today please do like uh, this uh, live stream you can tag other people that you think would enjoy it as well uh, and share it with your network and we'll see you next time thank you so much thank you bye bye